Hey everyone, welcome to episode 5 of Cracking the CSWE. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at making some complex part modifications inside of SOLIDWORKS. Remember, the download for all the files we're going to be using in this video is in the description down below. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be reminded of any future videos. And with that out of the way, let's just get right into it. Even though you won't be required to make a standard part on the CSWE exam, much like you would on the CSWP exam, you're still required to make modifications to parts, often in complex ways. The main ways you'll be required to do this is through changing a single body into a multi-body part, editing features while keeping the original design intent, and as well, adding other features. Before we start, it's good to note that I won't be looking at the mass properties after I finish every part, but on an exam, you will be required to do this to get the answer. So let's just get into the first part. Here we can see that we have a sphere with two rectangular ends and as well, an engravement in the side. Let's say in an exam situation, it wants us to take the shape of the profile we have on the right and have the same path on the left side where the front plane is dividing the right and left of this engravement. There are a few ways we could do this, namely, by editing the sketch itself or by cutting away the left half and mirroring the raised section. These would work. However, I'm going to show a way which goes through the process of how you would make this type of feature from first principles, so we learn a bit more about SOLIDWORKS while learning about part modifications. First, we're going to want to sketch on the plane that this feature was made from. So let's start a sketch on the right plane. Then, in this sketch, we can use the convert entities to get the feature geometry to our sketch. We'll select the path that the feature is created from. You may be tempted to convert the part geometry and then offset it, but since the sketch is projected onto a sphere, it would not be perfect. So, with our new sketch, we can draw a center line vertically, trim any entities on the left, and then mirror our lines on the right. Remember, you could have just edited the original sketch to do this. To get rid of the original feature, we can quickly use the delete face button, selecting all of the faces and selecting delete and patch. On the other hand, we could use a revolved cut that would get rid of the feature, but I'm just going to use delete faces because it's much quicker to do. Now in the next step, we'll be learning something new, which is why I chose this way for the video. To get this sketch onto the surface of our sphere, we can use the project curve button. We can then select the surface of the sphere and our sketch in the selection boxes. Now we can finish this by using a swept surface, selecting the circular profile option, and then selecting the diameter as the same diameter of the previous feature. The next part we have here is a plastic part that somewhat resembles a handheld fruit slicer. Here we'll look at another relatively simple concept of editing features, which you should be pretty comfortable with if you've gone through the CSWP exam. Here we can see the part has these patterned fins on the inside. Let's say in an exam situation, it would want us to edit these patterns. The first thing we should do is understand the design intent in the feature tree, pretty much just figuring out what's going on in the part. We can see that there are two circular patterns. One locally makes groups of three fins, and then the second pattern will pattern these groups to fit the rest of the part. From the CSWP series, you should know how to edit features, so let's just quickly recap that. First, let's say we want to remove one of the groups of three, and then increase the spacing between the fins. We of course could change the numbers in the number boxes to do this. We would just decrease the instance by one. Likewise, if we want to do this with the independent groupings of three, we can do that as well. For example, I can increase or decrease the spacing between them according to the question in the exam. The next part is what looks like a cube with a notch coming out the side. Let's say we want this notch to come out of all eight edges, and as well we want the cube to be split up into eight equal bodies, making a multi-body part. A way that we would do this is to segment our cube into the signal segment we would want to use, and then use a circular pattern followed by a mirror. 
Like everything, there are multiple ways to do this, but I think this teaches you a best practice for the exam. So let's make two extruded cuts that split the section into a perfect eighth of the cube. Then, now that we have this, let's do a circular pattern. We can choose the inside line as the axis for rotation and then have four instances equally spaced around 360 degrees. Make sure the bodies do not merge. Now that we have the top part, we can quite easily mirror using the bottom face to finish the part. The last part we're going to look at is a part in the shape of a traffic pylon. Let's say we want to give the bottom section of this pylon a dome-like contour on the top while maintaining the square profile when we look from the top down. The first thing we can recognize with this model is that it is shelled. Thin walled parts are more painful to work with if we don't have to. So let's use an extrude up to next to fill in the part. Then, we can start a sketch on the front plane. I'll sketch out a profile I want to rotate around the pylon's primary axes, which would give that dome-like shape. The dimensions here that I'm assigning are arbitrary, as they would be provided in the exam. Once we have this, we can do an extruded revolve, all the way around the part. Now that we have that done, we can cut away the excess to maintain the square profile when looking from a top view. To do this and maintain our part's original design intent, we can convert the sketch that created the base square into a new sketch. From this, we can do an extruded cut with the side to cut flipped. Anything outside the square profile will be cut. Next, we need to shell our part. Before this, I'll add some fillets. If these aren't asked of you in the exam, of course don't do this, but for our purposes, we can make this part look much better with some simple fillets. Then, once we're done, we can shell the part, leaving the bottom face open, applying the thickness that we noted earlier. That's all for this video. There are some other things about part modifications that will combine these concepts, but we're going to be looking at that in the practice episode at the end of the series, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching episode 5 of Cracking the CSWE. In the next episode, we're going to be taking a look at assembly modifications opposed to part modifications. So, I'll see you in that video.